Howdy folks! So here we have a Panasonic SLCT810 portable CD player and this, uh, I remember getting this back in 2004 and this, as far as I know, was the world's thinnest portable CD player at that time. Um, I'm not sure if it was always the, uh, the thinnest uh, I'm not even sure, maybe it still is, I, I don't know, but definitely the time it was. And, I mean, that's, I don't have my calipers, but, I mean, it's it's less than a centimeter thick. Um, and it w it was kind of ridiculous. This was like the, the creme de la creme of CD players. I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't get better than this. Um, so, I wanted to do, tear this down today. Uh, you know, this is... This is this was my good trusty CD player, and uh, it actually still works. Um, but I'm kind of curious to see how they packed all the stuff in here back in uh, in 2004. So to give you a little overview, on the outside here, um, this thing has some interesting power, um, interesting power stuff. You'll notice if I just open it up inside here, uh, it has a battery compartment which contains these things, and these are special cells, Panasonic obviously being one of the world's largest, if not the world's largest, battery manufacturer. They made their own cells, which were super thin, um, in order to, of course, get them in the package. And they were rechargeable inside the unit, but they also had this, which was a um, basically a battery case, and you could if I could get this thing open, one side, one of these sides opens. There we go, uh, and it holds two AA batteries. So you could basically take this, and it had some proprietary connector, and you could plug this into the, um, sorry, you plug it into the side of the unit like that, and you could get uh, extra battery life, or you could run it without these cells, um, which was kind of an interesting, interesting concept. It also had a, uh, a DC power jack, which was uh, four and a half volts, and you could take a, a power adapter, you could plug it in, you could run it off of that, or charge it through that. Or one of the coolest features, which um, I, I think it came with it, was this, and uh, just like Apple's MagSafe connector, it's actually a magnetic um, power connector. So it just sort of snaps on there, and uh, you could charge it that way. So I mean, I mean, this was really cool. I mean, especially at that time. So on the side we have some buttons, uh, all your standard playback and volume buttons. There's uh, two colors of LED behind you. There's green and orange, and they uh, allow you to check. Like if you press volume up, it'll show you the battery status, like a bar graph, and they flash different colors when it's playing. Uh, there's a hold switch here. Uh, your headphone jack, uh, the reset, uh, the the open lever. Now the headphone jack is special. It's got this ring around the outside and the reason for that is because it plugs into the uh, control module so they've got an extra ring on the TRS jack as well as this outer contact and it connects to this which has got a full LCD dot matrix. Um, it's got a hold switch as well, uh, some buttons for EQ mode and then a joystick which also pushes down and that's how you do all the functions, and your headphones plug in there, and then this can clip on. Uh, but you can run it. W you can run it with this or with this. You don't need this if you don't want to have it. So details on the bottom for anyone who's interested. And yes, it's December two thousand four. I wrote when I bought it on there for some reason. But hey, at least it makes it easy to date. So inside, it has this high mat switch. Um, Honestly, to this day, I still have no clue what that does. Um, it's probably some proprietary Panasonic thing, if I had to guess, but uh, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. So, it looks like um, on the back, there's this ring, which is like a foot, and if you rotate it, there you go. It comes off, uh, but it doesn't reveal any screw holes, so I'm going to assume the, the screws I can see here are the only thing that's holding it on. So let's start by removing these. Screwdriver is not 
perfectly the right size because these are pretty tiny screws. Now this thing replaced another CD player that I had. It was made by Memorex, if I remember correctly. And the one thing I liked about the one that one was it was uh, it was clear. You could actually see the disc spinning inside, which was kind of cool. This thing um, replaced that after uh, I don't know two three years. Eventually, the uh, the door hinge spring broke, and it was really bad because it had a, a software bug in the anti-skip feature. <laughs> so I thought it was. It was very annoying. This thing has flawless anti-skip. Uh, there's two different modes. So what I believe this thing does is it actually uh, transcodes your audio to something like MP3 on the fly, um, and then it plays it back to you. So the disc actually stops spinning. So it basically starts spinning the disc, reads the data very quickly, and then um, basically stops spinning to try and conserve power uh, as well as you know prevent skippage. Uh, and it actually did a very good job of that. I don't think I could ever make this thing skip. So it looks like it wants to go. I have to do this off camera. I'm looking into getting a better tripod or some other way of mounting my camera because it's very, very annoying. It's in the way. I can't do a lot of things on camera that I'd like to do. It's also not very high off the desk, so getting big things in shot is not easy. I honestly don't know how this comes apart. I've never taken this apart before, so I'm figuring this out on the fly. I want to say that it's just clipped, but let's try to prize it a little bit. Give it a little bit of gentle persuasion. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I know what it is. I think in these little holes here, there's clips. That would be my best guess. Let's see if let's see if that's right. That fit me as well. Okay, so let's try this. Yeah, that's definitely a clip. Oh, you know, I thought they didn't have clips. I thought clips were a relatively new annoyance, but I guess that's not true. I guess the can't get away from the clips. You just can't do it. There we go. Okay, so there were just two clips on opposing sides. Okay, so on the top frame here, we have the buttons, which are actually quite nice. They're uh, on their own little little spring type formed uh, plastic there and the hinge is made of metal, all one assembly and also the battery contacts are actually part of the I don't know no they're not part of the same they're screwed very close together though but they are not contacting so I'll set that aside and let's look at the board so we've got uh, one of the battery contacts has obviously come out. That's obviously goes into the top housing. So we've got two boards here. Um, this board is obviously the power board, and this is obviously the main digital board. Uh, and then we've got, of course, the uh, lens, the yeah, the laser assembly. So here we've got the what I would assume is the uh, metal bar. The magnets are actually in the. They're actually in this. This is magnetic. So this is. Uh, this is just a bar of metal. Protection diode, the two contacts, the DC barrel jack, and the other weird proprietary connector that I have no idea. I've never seen that before, never seen it again. And it's just got a piece of flat flex that runs under the. Uh, under the head 
and makes contact with the board here. So let's see, can I get this assembly out? Um, uh, what was what was that that just came out? I'm uh, not sure what that was. Was that the high mat switch? I think that might have been the switch. I have to go look look back and see what that came off of. Okay, so we can see uh, the switches along the edge here. Very, very, very tiny. What's kind of interesting um, to note is the switch on the far end here, uh, the one that's, I believe that's the volume up, is actually not the same switch. That's interesting. I'm not sure why they would have done that. I mean... I don't see any reason... Any clearance reasons why they would have needed... A different switch. That's in- that's- that's weird. Okay. I wouldn't have- I wouldn't have uh, thought that. So, we've got some chips. They all seem to be going this way. Uh, this is a Samsung, I'm gonna guess, just straight off the bat from the footprint and the manufacturer. That's probably some form of SD RAM, which is most likely used by the, um, the encoder to... So basically, that, that's the anti-skip feature. So, like I said, it spins it as quickly, reads the data off, encodes it into some sort of digital format. Don't know what that format is. And then just stores it here and plays it back from there. So you're never really actually listening to the CD. You're always listening to a lower quality encode of the CD. Um, and here we have a chip which actually has, uh, see that M there? That's for Matsushita, which is the parent company of Panasonic back when they were actually still called Matsushita. Um, they changed their name a couple years ago to Panasonic uh, because they don't really encompass any more companies anymore. They used to own National and a bunch of other companies, but um, but they've kept that, that mark because it's just so iconic. They, their capacitors, for example, still have the M on them. So that's interesting. That might, that, that, that might be a custom part. In fact, it probably is a custom part, uh, which is interesting. I would have expected something off the shelf, but I guess maybe at this, this kind of time, that wasn't available. Yeah, there's a 32 kilohertz crystal here, probably for time base of some sort. There's that switch. Uh, all of them are solid caps. All solid surface mount caps, which is quite nice. Um, a big power device. I want to say that's probably a regulator of some kind, but I, I honestly don't know. I want to get this board out, but I've got to take this assembly out first. So let's just lift that up there and we've got these two flat flexes this one's probably for the motor drive and this one is definitely the data output from the uh, laser wow those are some really stiff flat flex uh, connector tabs much, uh, much more robust than I would have expected, but I guess in an active product, that's a good thing. So here we go, we've got our uh, laser assembly on the carriage and then our motor. And underneath, very thin pancake motor. So obviously this just goes to all the pins of the motor. And it also goes to, oh yes, the uh, there's a long motor here which drives this uh, worm shaft, which is what this... Um, uh, uses to travel back and forth. And we can see that there's actually some handwriting of the probably Japanese? Was this made in Japan? Was this made in China? Oh god. Pieces everywhere. Oh, where was this made? Man. Made in Japan, yes. Okay. Well, Matsushita is a Japanese company, so yeah, that's some probably some Japanese workers, uh, writing. That was interesting to see some of the stuff you take apart and you see how many people have had to sign their initials on it. 
Um, some parts, some things are ridiculous, the number of quality people it goes through. So this board, is it attached with anything or is it just sort of, it's just sort of sitting in there. I'll take this flat flex off as well and lift the board out, see if there's anything on the back. More clips, of course, because can't get away from those. It's a very thin board. I mean, this is... Yeah, wow, that's very thin board. I mean, you don't want to flex that. And we've got some... We've got far more on the back than I actually expected. Um, this is in, this chip is interesting right here. It's actually branded Panasonic. Um, I, I honestly don't see Panasonic branded chips very often. Um, so that might be that might be an ASIC. Either that or it's a custom rebrand. But I'm just guessing it's probably an ASIC because I know Panasonic had a big a big lineup of portable CD players. It's possible that they used a similar chip in all of them. Um, I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna look that number up actually, after I make after I finish this video and just see if I can find any data on that. I doubt I will be able to. I mean, I I highly doubt there's any info on these chips, and this one here, uh, I don't see any manufacturers marking on that. So no, I don't know what that does. I would assume that that's probably the main processor, um, which deals with everything. Maybe this is some sort of a encoding coprocessor which, you know, does the, uh, like, it's just a codec or something, which does the transcoding, maybe a CD controller for the CD drive, things like that. That's the stuff they could have gotten off the shelf. But, uh, there's a whole bunch of, uh, discrete SOT23s and other very small package devices, probably all diodes and transistors. They're all labeled Q, so, yeah, a bunch of transistors. This is probably... Uh, if I had to guess, this is probably all audio amplification because it's all quite close to the uh, headphone jack. So I'm assuming this is probably the audio amplifier for the headphones. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of surprised. So that's that's one end of the battery terminal right there. Uh, you know, this power device. I'm just because it's got all the inductors next to it. This is probably a uh, this is definitely some sort of DC to DC because um, something tells me it's either DC to DC to charge the batteries or to discharge the batteries. I'm going to guess it's charging related because this would probably be designed to run off the native battery voltage, uh, but not, which is I think 2.4 volts if I remember correctly because it's nickel metal hydride and because it takes 4.5 volts in. So this is probably a char This is probably all charging stuff because the board on the upper, on the upside here, um, doesn't really have anything on it at all. Uh, I mean, it has like no components. It's just, it's just the connectors and a protection diode. I mean, that's about it. So, yeah, that's uh, that's all I can see. It's interesting at the moment. This is the uh, the lid detection switch. So this this is what detects uh, when it's open or not, that's the hold switch right there. So yeah, it's actually quite well made. Don't see any uh, anything else of interest. That switch is, I, I just don't, I just don't get it. I mean, that switch is, is interesting. Why it's, why it's different than the rest. Anyway, you can see they've got the, uh, these are the, the dual color LEDs. It's interesting, this LED is on the left of this button, and all the other LEDs are to the right of their buttons. It's another kind of strange design uh, decision there. The shape of this board is 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 quite neat. I mean, the, like I mean, the the amount of routing that they did on this board is kind of amazing to get it to fit in this uh, in this this chassis. You could even see where they actually indented the plastic so that the uh, the ICs on the back would fit in the board so they could get it even thinner by, you know, that extra millimeter or two. They even recessed the 
flat flex into the case to try and make it thinner. I mean, this thing, this thing was the shit. And I mean, not, not only, not only was it super thin, but they packed a lot into it. So it was not only the best CD player, but also super thin. It wasn't one of those. We made it super thin because we, you know, cheaped out and removed a whole bunch of stuff and it just turned out to be a crappy product. So, I mean, this was a, this was a great thing. It played MP3 and WMA CDs. I think they even advertised that on somewhere. I think it's on the front, actually, they advertised. Yeah, yeah. They advertised the WMA MP3 CDs. So that's probably what one of those chips does. It probably probably decodes or encodes to to that format. So yeah, that's uh, that's a teardown of uh, the SLCT810. So I'm gonna put this back together and maybe grab a CD and uh, get a little bit nostalgic. But, oh, you know, I have to charge the batteries first because these things are totally flat and I don't think I have any double A's for the expansion pack. So these batteries are 1.2 volts at 1400 milliamp hours. So, yeah, made in Japan. Original audio battery, I like that. That's, uh, that's kind of cute. So yeah, that's, uh, that's the tear, oh, well, I guess I'll, I'll show you the power adapter the thing came with for completeness. Um, so yeah, this was uh, manufactured either by them or for them, Matsushita Electric. Uh, this was 4.5 volts at 0.6 amps. 6 watts. Cool. So, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And, uh, Put in the comments if there's anything else you'd like to know or see. Thanks for watching.